Today's episode of the Jai Dave Show is brought to you by Bright and Beautiful, a home Kundalini Yoga experience. If you have heard about Kundalini Yoga, never tried it, or perhaps you have done it some, but you want to go much deeper, I want to really encourage you to check this out. If you are interested in having some simple practice that you can do from your own home to give your body good vitality, filled up with energy, to make the mind crystal clear, the heart wide open, you feel with love, you feel a real genuine sense of purpose there is nothing that i know personally that is more effective more powerful and more efficient in producing that and generating that for yourself than this kundalini yoga experience and the the way that it is taught and the way that it's presented to you in this bright and beautiful course is very accessible it's very real it's non-dogmatic it's not uptight it's not rigid but it is deep and it is sophisticated i want you to check it out if you go to brightandbeautiful.yoga spelled out brightandbeautiful.yoga type that into your browser you'll be able to get a four-part free training in kundalini yoga and if you love that it will also introduce you to a in-depth course that you can take part in and that if you take this bright and beautiful course it's designed for beginners but even teachers take this course sometimes to give them a much more in-depth understanding of the art and the science of kundalini yoga I, it, it's real powerful and it's it's really cool really easy to access go to bright and beautiful dot yoga that is all spelled out bright and beautiful dot yoga to begin your four-part free training hey everyone welcome to the jai dave show and today i have a very very special guest my wife simrit joined us we're here in our home And today I brought in a third party for this interview, Ross O'Brien, who is part of our team, one of the co-producers of this podcast, and also a big part of our team that helps us with all sorts of things, with our Life Force Academy and courses, and he's a yoga teacher himself. And I thought that was cool. We did it just to, Simran and I talk all the time and hang out all the time, so it was good to have another person in here to to give us some different angles on things and it's really really fun we're at our kitchen table and hanging out in our cozy home in the sierra foothills of northern california in nevada city where we all live and in a cozy chilly day but warm in here and we go through all sorts of things. It's like a listening party with Simran. We, t- we put our music on, some things, you, uh, one song at least that perhaps you've never even heard before that's perhaps my favorite of all her songs and get to hear her talk about it and about different situations that she's been in in her life and her music and all sorts of things. We took a little bit of a turn from what we've been doing on this podcast Whereas we didn't go into Simrit's life story all that much, but I think she's going to be on this a lot. So we might we might do that another time and hear how she's like concentrated her life force through her art and through her music. But you're going to get the sense of that anyways by just listening to her and talk about her life and her music and feel her vibe. She's an amazing person. She is an amazing artist, an amazing singer amazing yogini and uh, i think you're really gonna enjoy it so glad you're here thanks for listening make sure to check out her website simrit kaur music s-i-m-r-i-t-k-a-u-r music.com or just type in simrit and you'll find it anywhere you get your music spotify apple music itunes etc just type in simrit s-i-m-r-i-t and you are going to find a reservoir of amazing music that you're going to hear us talk all about in this episode. So before you do that, listen to the episode. It's really fun. I think you're going to like it. Here we go. Conversation with Simrit. Okay, what were you working on? Uh, I was just looking at theaters in Amsterdam. Oh, yeah. Most China, people China probably Avenues. don't realize um, how much work is involved in yeah. what you do. Yeah, no, that's okay though. They don't have to know. <laughs> they don't need to know how I sit up here in my robe and my sweats and do this all day. Every well, day well all they're day. gonna know now because they're on the podcast <laughs> and you just told them. No. <laughs> We've already started. Oh, we started. Yeah. Oh, well, I changed for you guys. I thought I would try to look. 
<laughs> decent. <laughs> Most people can't see you, though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we can see you. Yeah. yeah. Just just know that I look the way I look on the flyers. I'm at home, and I look that way all the time. Just wearing the crown <laughs> all the time around the house. <laughs> yeah, with, like, robe and slippers in the crown. Yeah, um. <laughs> yeah I can hilarious. testify to that. Yeah. <laughs> 90% of the time at the house... Simmer's wearing her crown. Yeah, I would, <laughs> if I had a crown like that, I'd wear it. Like, you only get to wear them on tour. What do you do with the I other know. six months of the I year? I know, they just sit up you in the cook closet. cook dinner in them, that's what you do. <laughs> I know. Cook a proper dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted Ross to come to this because, um, well, because... Because large, we love Ross. Yes. Well, <laughs> first, first and foremost reason. <laughs> Co-producer of the podcast, Ross. Awesome. Did you know that was your title? I didn't. What? I just found out. <laughs> <laughs> and also because awesome. Simmer and I talk together all the time, so I wanted to bring in a third element uh, to just mix it up a little bit. Cool. Exciting. I want to play something, though, and um, just to start us off here. And I want to hear, Simmer, what is it? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Not necessarily like what it's about or anything, but just like... What's the first thing that comes to mind when you hear it? Deep. Depth. Do you remember what was going on when you recorded it? Yes, I do. What was that? This is Pavan Guru. This is on Simrit's Songs of Resilience. That was... My uncle had just passed, a really close uncle of mine, and... Uh, yeah, so that's the day that he had his funeral, actually, when we recorded this. And uh, I don't know exactly what was going through my mind at the time, but I do remember being in the studio and not saying anything to anybody. And I think you told everybody what was going on, potentially. I, I may have told our producer, Mahan Kalpa, but I, I don't think I told anyone else in the studio. Uh, what I but remembered... This, but I put him in this. like This mm-hmm. was like to him in some way like this had a lot to do with him to Mahan Kalpa no 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 to my uncle to your uncle yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> I put my producer in Mahan Kalpa <laughs> Mahan Kalpa is Simrit's producer so yeah I remember I was in the control room when this was being recorded and I didn't know that you had told uh, Mahan Kalpa that uh and that perhaps you did or, or didn't but also the like the I didn't rec- tell him it was the funeral going on at that exact moment right of the recording this exact song but i did tell him my uncle passed the funeral was happening simultaneously as when you guys were recording this track this particular track yeah yeah and simmer yeah, was okay. heartbroken that she couldn't be there right. because right. they had already they had already you know scheduled the studio recording and so there was like musicians flying in from all over the country and he had just passed away we were with south we were in south carolina with our family when he passed away and he lived in Alabama and so all the family was going to the funeral but we are already Mm -hmm. scheduled to be in this so she was pretty uh, sad that she couldn't be there and then on the morning of the funeral we're in the studio which is in in Bloomington, Indiana and not to mention it's winter time moody and not to mention that the studio sits like right on top of this big cemetery Oh yeah. You remember wow. that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a trip. So yeah, it's a trip. so um it's a cool it's like a barn made into a studio. It's an old church. Old church? Yeah. yeah. It looks like a barn looks now like a though, barn. the way they <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's an old church. Well, I was in the control room and they were doing it and they all play live. Like they're it's not the band's playing live together. So let's hear it. But I They're all in separate, isolated rooms, but they're playing live together. And Mahan Kalpa and I are in the sound, or what do you call it, the control room, listening, and they're playing. They're in the vibe, and it clearly has a vibe. That was apparent from the beginning. And uh, Mahan Kalpa, I didn't think he knew, and I still probably think he probably didn't know at the time the funeral was happening. And as it was happening, as they're playing, it's, and it's a waltz. It's a one, two, three, one. Three, one, two, three. And Mahan Kalpa, the only thing he said was the funeral waltz. And. Uh, yeah, he didn't know about the funeral. Yeah. He just knew my uncle had passed. Yeah, that's wild. So, anyway, so that's, that's Pavan cool. Guru. That's cool. That's um, 
you know, and <laughs> that's funny. As I turn that off, I can still hear it because that song we have playing in our house on repeat all the time. <laughs> Which is what you put on I repeat. I do it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a smart I don't move. mind. Yeah, I don't mind. I like it. Well, the reason we put things on repeat in the household is uh, not because it's Simmert's music necessarily, but just Simmert's music happens to work for the purpose that I like to have is in holding the vibe and having the mantras going all the time in the home. And it's not always Simmert's music, but it happens yeah. to be what we have on right now. That's what I meant. You made this particular selection, but usually we have other selections going on 24-7 on repeat just to keep the vibe going in the house. It's I have a question. Nice. Yeah. What is it that you're... What are... When you're going into the studio to record... Mm-hmm. <clears throat> What is your mindset? Or do you have a particular mindset? Hmm. That's a tough question. Uh, what is the mindset? What is your goal? How about that? Well, my goal is to create uh, the most... The, my goal is to create the most tangible form of like sonic art that I can. So that, And when I say tangible, I mean something that people can feel touched by that they can relate to and that the the music relates to them it understands them and it carries them with it mm. if that makes sense what is um, the challenge of the recording studio time money mm. <laughs> um too many options there's so many options like when we play live for instance you're just playing and you can't go back Mm. So if you, it's like when you're playing live, it's like you're on a fast track, you're on a train and you just have to hold on and, and like, you just have to do your best to, to like hang on to what's going on. You just have to hang on, you know, cause it moves really quickly and you can't, um, you know, you can't backtrack when you play live. You can't, Oh, let's start that again. Or, Oh, I hit a different note there. Or, oh, he didn't come in on time there. Or, you know, it's mm. just like. You just have to do it no matter how many times you rehearse. In the studio, on the other hand, you're using a different part of your brain because you're constructing something in the moment. So you have like your left and right brain is working, you know, they're working together simultaneously, whereas live, you know, it's more of being in the creative space. You're not like actively like constructing something in the moment, building something, you're writing something. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So, like, for me, I'm just trying to get on the horse and stay on it. You know what I'm saying? And, and Or on the train or whatever you want to call it, live. I want to ride it and be at one, be one with it. Whereas in you're the studio... you the horse live. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like you're, like, off for the runnings. Right. There's no turning mm-hmm. back. So mm-hmm. you just... The, the goal when you're playing in a, a live show is that you just want to be in harmony with that entity that you are writing which i call the sound you know that's being in the nod is being in harmony with that um if you're just hanging on and it's dragging you then that's not a good show you're feeling like uh like oh my god like you know if you're not inside of it like that if you're not in harmony with that which is moving you know it's just like this entity that's just moving really quickly steamrolled by the nod yeah, yeah pretty much <laughs> and everything's moving really quickly um, but in the studio, it's different because, like you asked what the biggest challenge was, I mean, it's time and it's options. You have a gazillion options. and A it's gazillion the, options, but limited time. Limited mm. time, and depending on what the funding is, limited funding, right. you know. So, But it's also a blessing because you don't have, like, a gazillion minutes to sit there and be like, no, I want to do this, or oh, I want to do that, or oh, well, we could do this, or oh, we could, you just have to do whatever's within the budget and the time limit and you have to let it go. So it's a it's a challenge and it's a it's an asset at the same time. So mm-hmm. well, you just yeah. said, yeah, Dave, I didn't know this. You guys are in separate rooms when you guys record your music. Yeah. What's the challenge of that? Because watching you guys on stage, I mean watching almost any band on stage, but just yeah. like you guys are always communicating. Yeah. You know totally. And there's something there's like a communal effort that happens on stage when you're producing that sound. Yep. So what's the challenge to being in separate rooms? How do you maintain that connection being mm. 
That's it. That's a good question. That is a very good question. It's all about um, your ears. It's all about listening and your ears turn on like to the nth degree, even yeah. more so. Like your ears are on live too. But you can't see each other. <clears throat> no, I mean, sometimes I could see someone like out of the corner of my eye in this room because the rooms are enclosed in mm-hmm. glass mostly. But I don't see everybody right. And it's it's different, you know. Sometimes you have to stop and be like, hey, uh, that's that that note or that we practiced or, you know, or that we're coming in on that time or... Um, but most of the time, everyone's just really deeply listening, and yeah. you have to only go by your ears and the feel of things. And if it feels right inside, then it's usually a good take. But even sometimes when it feels like the best take ever, you're like, damn, we forgot this, or ah, we didn't do that, and you have to go back, and you're like, ah. So the studio is pretty variable, I would say. Live is Live is variable, but in different ways. There's just... There's not as much room for um, et- you. You don't edit live. You can edit in the studio. So and edit. It, I mean, by like, we're performing live, but we can stop the tape because we record on tape, and we could stop the tape and say, okay, let's let's start that again. But most of the time in the studio, we're playing we're playing each track one to three times maximum. And that's it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Let's switch it up a touch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's listen to this one now. And, um, and then Thank you. let us know. I'll pass this to Ross. Let, let us know what's the first thing. We'll give it a, let it breathe. This is recorded recently, live, Grace Cathedral, San Francisco, sold out show. This is just a glance, unreleased so far, at at least the time we're recording this podcast. One word? Dope. (laughs) (laughs) No way around that one. That's just dope. (laughs) Love that. Deep root. This podcast is called Listening Party with Simran. that uh, you and Salif wrote this song. Mm-hmm. Salif came yeah. to you with this and you guys then put it together. Too. Yeah. Where do the lyrics come from? This is called Just a Glance. What are the lyrics? What are some of the lyrics? Give us a line yeah. or two. Um, yeah, Salif and I wrote this together. I love when we write songs together. We've written uh, a few together. Not that many, but we're writing more together for this next album, which I'm really stoked about. So Salif is the Cora player in Simrit's band. The, the Cora is that... Um, uh, 20, how many strings? 21 strings. 21 African, string. West African harp instrument. Gourd instrument. That he's, he's part of the rhythm section, basically, even though he has a very melodic... Stringed instrument. Mm-hmm, yeah. Very melodic um, aspect of the band as well, but definitely part of the rhythm section. Mm-hmm. Um, so, the words, You have taken away my looks with just a glance. 
You have taken my identity with just a glance. Uh, I'm yeah. listening to the words right now, so it's hard for me to. <laughs> What are you saying right now? What is this? And I give my life to you. Uh-huh. And sometimes I say, Where did the love. lyrics come from? The lyrics were inspired by a beautiful Sufi poem that we came across together. And the. They don't, they're not verbatim, you know, but we like to feel inspired by whatever comes our way. And, and this in particular was something that we felt like, wow, we really, really love what's being said in this poetry. Um, I could go through the lyrics, but it's hard for me sometimes when you're you playing the song. Them, yeah, yeah <laughs> I have to like, when I hear them in real time, I'm like, wait, that's the lyric now. Yeah. Um, did he come to you with the poem, or did he come to you with the, like the melody first? He came to me with his part of the melody, so yeah. not the whole song. The Korah part. The Korah part, yeah. yeah. He mm-hmm. came to me the with groove, his part. The groove, essentially, right? Yeah. The melodic groove. Yeah, his mm-hmm. part of the melodic mm-hmm. groove. Mm-hmm. And then, and then um, we got together with the band, and, uh, and he came to me with this poem, too. And he was like, let's do something with this. Cool. And I was like... Oh, but this poem's awesome. It's uh it's the poem's extremely wordy. We only used like a handful of lines in the poem to extract the words from. So like we didn't even use the lines verbatim or anything like that, but it was more of an inspiration. Mm-hmm. So um, you have taken away my looks with just a glance. You have taken my identity with just a glance. Um by making me drink the wine of love and devotion. You have intoxicated me with just a glance. That's one verse. There's mm-hmm. another verse. I mean, there's more and more verses. But it's all about um, feeling that uh, spaciousness, the void, that, that what you feel in the music or what you feel when you watch a beautiful film or when you're with somebody, you know, and you feel that timeless and spaciousness and that timelessness and everything like that. And that's, what's, that's what we're talking about in the song. Um, but this is about, you know, just, it's just like just a glance or just a hint of fragrance or whatever that is that you can experience the totality of that void or that nothingness in just a glance mm-hmm. or in just a, you know, just a sn- smell or right. whatever it is. But this happens to be talking about it. All right. Let's go back into it. Oh, What I like is that uh, um, this song, probably all the songs, but this song in particular, at least just listening to it, like, everybody shines. Mm-hmm. Everybody in the band shines. Like, we could just, like, listen to this and Shannon on the cello, mm-hmm. Jared on the bass, Devin on the drum, drum kit, and you, and then Salif, of course. Mm-hmm. Everybody's killing it. Yeah, <laughs> we love playing this song. Yeah. The band in general, like all of us, really love playing deep groove songs together. It's our wheelhouse that we're, you know, and we're finding that out more and more. Um, we play songs like this very well together. Mm. And we play everything we play very well together, but th- there's something about this kind of song that, like you said, everyone shines and we all get incredibly lit up. And yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, different songs evoke different moods and different feels and different effects but this yeah we we love this we could play this all day long (laughs) okay similarly similar wheelhouse fan favorite (laughs) clandestine similar uh creation process to this one right yeah yeah you and salif Salif and i and this one uh lyrics from where dao de ching yeah, no? inspired from the Tao. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. We never do any. We never look at anything and say we want to put this verbatim in there. Of but course. we always feel inspired by a passage or mm-hmm. something like that. Something that we both really resonate with. 
together where we both really feel like, wow, this, mm-hmm. this feels like, yeah, we really resonate with this. This is what we're all about. And we like to put it into a song. the mind with clandestine everything <laughs> dope. is dope no, I'm, I'm gonna try to think of another word uh, deep yeah. Yeah. grooving and I love Salif's pocket on this I just love hearing where he where he plays inside the rhythm it's really cool so what I, would you say it. to folks that would say well you know people who I don't know there's people out there that say this but pretty sure you know there's some people feel they're coming to your concert and they're not necessarily expecting these types of like real deep grooving grooving music soulful like it's because your music has an absolute meditative aspect to it Mm -hmm. but not necessarily in the cliched way because like I can like this song even it has a meditative vibe to it even though it's upper it's upper tempo it has groove not to say things that you know should have groove but it's not necessarily like what some people may think of as like meditative mm-hmm. but that's what i personally like about your music is that it has the vibration that you know, you can be in a meditative space and this music matches it, mm-hmm. you know? But it doesn't necessarily mean it's like like beatless or like, or, yeah. or too, it doesn't have to be slow. You can dance to it. And I think that's unique. It's not your typical cliche new age sound or right. meditative sound, what people think of that. Yeah, I like our music because it doesn't fit into any box, and I like that about it. And it's, you you can't deny it. You know, it's ancient. It's got this ancient vibe to it. It's got a, a, such a depth to it. You can't. It, it, we could play as fast as we wanted to, and you can't deny it that that is is included inside of the vibration. I mean, it's deep. It's ancient. It's got a primal vibration. It's also got a super etheric vibration at the same time. It also ma- make you groove you know make you move your butt you can't not shake it you know or move your head you know or whatever and i love that you know i do i mean that's what i do you do i mean you know and even on like tracks like call a call that are very intense and deep of course they still have that deep ancient sound and i feel like that's the thread that goes through all of our music it's deep it's got this ancient thread that runs through it you can't deny it that's undeniable and that is what i feel people um when they get into that space they feel like wow i want more of that because that's how we feel you know we feel that way when we play it together it's like it's fun and it's engaging but it is also deeply meditative at the same time. Like we go into, I know, well, I, I'm not going to speak for everybody else, but I go into serious trances when we play. And I love it because like that's my favorite place to be when we're playing this kind of music. And just, I mean, yeah, I mean, day after day on tours, uh, I just feel so fortunate to be able to you know, be in that space day in and day out on tours. And that really is like a fuel for me on the tours. And that's the fuel for me to create the tours because that space is a, is something that you, that you have inside of you forever that never leaves you. And it's a, it's a really beautiful thing and you can call it up at any time and, and, you know, it's beautiful. And that's what this music does. It evokes that, that depth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's call a call, which I love. Yeah, me too. But it's also got that edge like mm. this. It's got that edge, and I love that. It's, uh, it's like mm. it's warrior, 
It has a warrior energy. Epic. I will. <laughs> Of Shannon's cello work here. You might have to clarify that because I bet a lot of people are listening like, what cello? I don't hear cello. Right. You know. That kind of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's Shannon Lee Hayden, everybody, <laughs> who's one of my beloved bandmates. I love her. And I just love what she brings to the sound. And uh, I always tell her and tell people. When they ask me about her, they ask me, like, what is it that you love about Shannon? And besides her being such a beautiful human being and incredible artist, I'm a fan of her art, of her artistry. She really goes there and takes you there with her music. She's not afraid of the edge. And I think that's why all five of us as a band work really well, because we all enjoy the edge. We all like to walk on that edge, and especially in the music we like to play music where it's like, wow, there's a definite edge there and it feels really good, you know. And, and I don't mean it like um, like there's a defined, it's not like there's some defined edge but in that sense of the word. But what I mean is there's a, the music is edgy and it takes you, you know, into that space because of that. It takes you into that space really quickly, that really deep space, that ancient space really quickly. Mm. Mm-hmm. And her that that sound you heard, by the way, that it was in the intro of the song. That's her cello, and she runs her cello. She plays this um, electric cello that she brings out on tour, but she plays this really beautiful old school vintage cello from the early 1800s that she has, and that's what she's playing on the albums. But she's not, you know, going with her. With she's not doing all this crazy stuff with her bow. She's running, her, she is, but she's not making those sounds that you hear exactly the way you hear them. She's running her cello through a massive pedal board with all these different effects. And so that's another part of her instrumentation is her pedal board, which I think is really cool. So she's not just playing the cello. She there also knows her pedal board really well. Mm-hmm. She knows how to work it. It's my favorite part. use this song like in a yoga class in the meditation that's the part right there right here this whole part it's almost like you can feel the energy like moving the people's like crown up Mm. their spine just the way the melody and the way you sing it and the way the whole vibe of the music is and the mantra itself what can you talk about this mantra yeah so um so call, call a call, city call, maha a call, a call murit. Murit means the face of, and so, um, so basically we give reverence to time. We give reverence to no time. We give reverence to life. We give reverence to death, and both of those exist within us. But we always remember that we're the face of deathlessness. That we're the face of infinity. That we're the you know we're the, uh, the what, repres- mm-hmm. what does that mean? What is it like if the face of deathlessness? That we are like, uh, how could I say that? How how can I put into words what I feel? That we are the representation. Um, that we are sounds so cliche to say that we're infinity, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that we're the face of deathlessness. Like this identity is infinite. Mm. And the identity isn't the face that you see on my, you know, skin. It's not my outward face. It's the face of the soul. It's mm. what comes through the music. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that identity inside the music. 
Yeah, the uh, music speaks for itself because mm-hmm. I—I mean, that's kind of what I feel from it, mm-hmm. and like what I experience with this, like this type of music, and you know, in particular, this song. Like, it does feel like it takes me to the part of myself that doesn't die, mm-hmm. whatever that is. Mm-hmm. And music—that's again going back to like what I think is unique about this music—is it does that, you know. And some music can be m- melodically beautiful, have an epic feel. Mm-hmm. But then, if you put like that melodically beautiful, epic feel, and then it's energetically takes me to the part of myself that doesn't die. That's pretty valuable. Yeah, yeah. It's like pure soul, you know. Mm-hmm. When I listen to this music and when we play together as a band, I feel pure soul. It's mm. it, and there's no barrier to that this to me just like fully just like opens that up for us and the listener and says here you go just have the experience you don't have to do anything to get there we're providing that for you enjoy Mm -hmm. so i feel like that's at least how i feel and i know i've talked about that with the band and and we all feel that way and that's why we love to do this so much together it's a really beautiful experience Okay, taking a quick break from our conversation with Simrit to tell you about Bright and Beautiful, the home kundalini yoga experience. I know a lot of you are familiar with yoga. You may have not tried kundalini yoga. I think you have to try it. If you're into something that gets you very lifted, takes it transports you into a meditative space. All yoga practice is essentially doing the same thing. They're eventually bringing you into a meditative space. Kundalini yoga does it really, really quickly. It's a powerful practice. And if you're the type of person who likes to do something that's like, like really powerful and, and just like undeniably effective really quickly, then you have to try it. And Bright and Beautiful is really the perfect uh, way to try that out. And if you go to brightandbeautiful.yoga, you type that into your browser, it's all spelled out just like that, brightandbeautiful.yoga, then as a listener of this podcast, you can get access to a four-part free training that we created for you to have a, a legit experience of what Kundalini Yoga is really like. It's a beginner's experience, but it's also very powerful, very deep. I think you'll love it. And if you love that four-part free training, it'll it'll open you up to a full bright and beautiful course, give you a very in-depth and comprehensive experience and training in Kundalini Yoga so you can have a practice that you can go to anytime you want. So if you're feeling down, low energy, you're feeling perhaps like a sense of despair from everything going on in the world, or you're feeling lackluster or a little bit of a heavy depression or anxiousness, and then you can go in and do the practice and using the breath and using the body to stimulate the energy system, make the mind clear, make the heart open, and all of a sudden you feel really good. Does it take away all the problems of the world? No, but it, it brings you into a space where you're able to be happy no matter what and be able to be filled with a certain level of content and joy and love and what could be better than that so go to brightandbeautiful.yoga type that into your browser spelled out brightandbeautiful.yoga and you can begin your four part free training in the kundalini yoga system I think you'll love it okay back to our conversation with Simrit I have a question for you Jai Dave Mm -hmm. just uh, you know you're out You've seen so many of these shows, and you go on uh, on tour, and you're seeing successive shows over the years. What evolution have you seen? Uh, just this tour coming off this last tour, and some of those last shows. What do you feel like has changed or evolved over over the years in terms of their sound? Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess the main thing that I think, well, it's definitely better than it's ever been now. But it's always been good, you know. I was always at from the very beginning. I couldn't understand why people weren't like, you know, jumping on it immediately, you know. Because, but it took it takes time, like everything, yeah. and yeah. Um, not necessarily like even crowds, but like why, like Within people the, that we knew who who yeah. were, you know, in charge of um, even like record companies and everything. Like it didn't make sense to me. Is like that, they not hearing what I'm hearing? Right. <laughs> but that was just you know. <laughs> my naivety a little bit and 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 not i was right <laughs> <laughs> you've been proven right <laughs> and um 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, now they're like, and, and so then uh, it sounds like Simrit, you know, more mm-hmm. than ever, more than ever before, and and it always has, but but you know, it's just evolving. Like the musicians, like their chemistry. This particular band now is really seems to have a great chemistry and yeah it's like light years and it, mm-hmm. i always, i thought it was amazing years ago and now i think it's like light years better than it was years ago i would agree yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah, i would agree for sure yeah i'm interested to see where it's going to go cuz it also feels like they're kind of just getting going yeah yeah, yeah. this incarnation mm-hmm. for sure there's something i've been wondering for a while just uh having been to some of the you know the kundalini yoga gatherings and seeing the bands that play there I think one of the things that stands out to me is that um, well, the diversity of the musicians that you have in the band, but also a lot within the Kundalini scene, it seems like uh, the musicians, the bands are all they're all like uh, devout Kundalini practitioners. They're made up of of yeah. that group, that uh, demographic, mm-hmm. and that your band is different in yeah. in that way. Mm-hmm. Whereas it's not. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the question is inside of that, but there seems like something that's, that sets you guys apart. And I wonder if that, um, do you think that lends itself to your accessibility as musicians or your music? Is that um, there's a diversity to it that maybe other people within this genre don't necessarily sure. have? Yeah, definitely. I'm aware of that. And I purposefully wanted the band not to be um, a certain way um, because, well, you know, when I first started, I was... I was playing with um, whoever, and it was great, and it was really awesome. And uh, as the the music's evolved, as I've evolved as an artist, I've also attracted different people into the sphere of this Simrit experience, or the experience itself is also attracting people into it. I believe it's an entity, you know, of its own as well, with its own legs. Um but yeah, I purposefully wanted a band that was made of non Kundalini yogis. Yeah. That, but I, I must say, every single person in the now band practices all... <laughs> Kundalini yoga. Absolutely, yeah. 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 <laughs> I saw Devin at the emergency. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting because there's never been a time where I. They I've all been, got the vibes, you know. They all have the vibes, but sometimes. Uh, I wanted something different, and I wanted to do something different. My music was already so different from the get-go. Even years ago, it was so different, and it actually opened up uh, an avenue in the world of kundalini yoga music for other people to explore more. The the way that I was playing, the way that I was singing, it was inspiring for other people, and they've said that. And, and now the world of kundalini yoga music is starting. Some people are starting to you know spread their own wings in other ways you know that's that's unique to them but for this particular band for me uh the the bottom line is this whether they're doing kundalini yoga or not for me the most important part of being a band together is the chemistry and also are these people able to go really deep and not be afraid of going as deep as we can and just supporting that process and everybody in this band is is good with that yeah more than good with that yeah and uh and sometimes you know when you're uh dealing with people that are in a specific community or or not some people are afraid to go there even though uh to me that's what the music's all about what do you mean by that afraid to go there that uh, you know, there's certain ideas and ideologies that people aren't even aware that they're clinging on to, or um, that you know, especially in the yoga world, there is a lot of music that's just very placid. It's beautiful, but it's placid, right. and and I like that. I like some of that kind of music, um, but it's, it it didn't inspire me to make music like that personally. I like it when other people make that kind of stuff. And if I feel like listening to something like that, then that's cool. There's a lot of that going on. So for me, I wanted to do something that inspired me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to put all this damn work into it. (laughs) You know what I mean? Um, And this band, every single musician in this band inspires me. Every single musician in this band is willing to take it as far far as it can go as deep as it can go and they're not afraid of the edge they're not afraid of that 
thing that some other people might be afraid of, even though they don't say it out loud. Yeah. You can hear it in the music. Yeah, I, th- yeah. I think this isn't unique to you know this genre of music, whatever it is, because it's not. Yeah. It's hard to put it in a genre. Certainly, you know, it's been influenced, of course, by the mantras of kundalini yoga and mm-hmm. that and, and in a certain way born out of that mm-hmm. to, to a certain sure. a, an aspect of it at yeah, least for sure. a major aspect yeah. and then it, you know who knows where it's going mm-hmm. um however like we could think like even like say country music mm-hmm. like there you know the vast majority of people making country music are going to be doing whatever's popular currently yep. or they're going to be going on like you know business as usual in the norm and then it's like the very few that are going to be edgy and mm. kind of do something that nobody else is doing mm. and they're going to have musicians that you know go to another level that most musicians in that genre don't go to and uh mm-hmm. so it's probably not, I th- it seems to me this is probably not unique to anything particularly with a yogic thing as much mm-hmm. as it is just yeah, you know Simrit and her band are artists and that's what they call Simrit like capital all caps Simrit is the whole band mm-hmm. and so they I, they've started using it like that they're artists and they're real artists and they're not they they never settle mm-hmm. they're always yeah. like trying to push mm-hmm. to find whatever's next yeah i love yeah. that <clears throat> because like that like to me everyone in the band is a yogi in the truest sense because they're so um well, they're so, and there's so much devotion happening. They're so devoted to their craft and the way that they uh, present things and the way that they play, and and they never stop. So they're each and every person in the band is just so incredible at their craft, and no one thinks that they're like incredible at their craft. I mean, they right. know that they're they're good at what they do, but they're always trying to get better. Everyone's always like. Wow. Humility. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. can go way deeper in a show than we just did now, guys. Like this was awesome, but let's take it deeper. Yeah. I mean, we'll say stuff like that to each other and like this was that was an incredible show. Can't wait to see what happens next year. It's gonna be even de- you know, and it's just like you know, it's stuff like that. And that's what I really appreciate about everyone in the band. And I was and I've always been like this. I've always not wanted to blend in and do things that everyone else is doing. I've always wanted to do things my way. Um, and I've always wanted to provoke people in a way that makes them think about their ideals and ideologies and things. I've always just had that in me. And uh, and it's not, you know, I'm not saying that we're playing this music just to provoke somebody, but what I'm saying is, like, we're going to do this our way. We're not trying to fit in. Um, you know, you can say what you want or think what you want, but this is, is this is deep, and it's very dope, and it's really awesome. And we can't deny that as a band, and, and the people that really like the music feel the same way. And so, yeah, but I like that question because it's cool to know that You've noticed that about the band too. There's a lot of, um, and I and I feel that this is the same in all genres of music. Um, there's a lot of, and especially what I noticed in the kind of yoga world. There's a lot of like, you know, <laughs> we we call it incest with all the musicians <laughs> because there's so many people from this pool playing in this then and this band over here and this band over here and i just never was into that i was like hey i just want to i just want to do this with people with different people and do our own thing. <laughs> maybe you cut that part out huh <laughs> people Probably might not. not understand that <laughs> people not. Oh, if people heard it they would understand what i'm talking about musicians would for sure well it shows up in who comes to your shows you know being down at that yeah. show in la just yeah. the wide demographic of people again totally. versus like going to a strictly kundalini yeah. festival or kundalini show yeah the people that come out to something like that in la was incredibly diverse even yeah. my friends who aren't kundalini practitioners were just like so blown away by their experience oh, you know tapped cool. into something inside of themselves that didn't have didn't have to have a container or context to it they yeah. just could relate to it directly through the music that's mm-hmm. awesome uh thank you for sharing that yeah, that's yeah cool. it'll likely get to a point where you know m- m- most of the people there is that won't like be looking at it and maybe it already is to a certain extent that at least there's a significant portion of the people they're not like coming to it thinking like this is a 
has anything to do with kundalini right, yoga. Yeah, it's, it yeah, just yeah, happens yeah. to Which be cool. yeah. Simrit's uh, part of Simrit's background. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that actually. There's all types of people from all walks of life, um, whole races and ages and genders, and it's cool. Like, you know, we know we've we've encountered people doing psychedelics at the shows too, and we're just like that. That doesn't bother us actually. We're just like cool these people i mean everyone gets what they come to get no one's exempt from that and um it like i said it's got legs of its own and we'll see where it continues to to grow and and move it'll be interesting well, we went to see you Sundur at uh royal albert hall a couple months ago and <clears throat> you know i don't understand i mean I, I guess he sang a couple songs in english but just a couple most of it i didn't understand <laughs> any of it but it didn't matter right. and uh, it didn't matter to me that his like uh, he's a sufi you mm-hmm. know from where is he from senegal mm-hmm. and sheikh amadou how do you um, say sheikh amadou bamba amadou bamba they're all like devotees of him and that was that's great because it gave it gives his music depth actually mm-hmm. because it gives him depth mm-hmm. right. and but it doesn't matter like like i'm not a devotee of Shake. Yeah, Amadou Bamba. Amadou. <laughs> I don't know why I can't. Ever. I always want to give it one extra syllable. Amadou Bamba. Uh, but I'm a devotee of what I'm a devotee to, so it deepens what I'm into. Right. Yeah. Because I'm experiencing somebody else who's authentically into what they're into. Yeah. yeah. And that's all that really matters, yeah. you know. And so I think when Simmerit's up on the stage, my experience is like she's not proselytizing anything. She's just into what she's into. Right. But then that's contagious, and it makes people yeah. be more into what they're into, right. or at least into the music, because the music's yeah. coming through soulful. Yeah, and that's, that's what essentially we all want with art. When we, go, when we experience art in any form, we want to be inspired in our own selves. We want that to be the catalyst for our own inspiration, and that's what we're looking for when we go see a concert or good music. And if I don't feel that in a concert, then I'm not going to go back usually. Mm. So, like, for me, the things that I'm really into are the things that inspire me on my own path. And it's not like, oh, well, I have to do what they do or I have to, you know, look how they look or whatever. So, because there are some some uh, people that, you know, like, I've never asked my band to dress a certain way or to put anything on their heads or to not put anything on their head, you know, or to do whatever. I do what I do, they do what they do, and it really matches really well. And because uh, I don't feel that uh, that I need to put any kind of constraints on people or anything like that. I just want my bandmates to feel as creative as they can and feel as good about it as they can. So, without putting as uh, without putting limitations on it as much as possible, at least you know. Mm-hmm. So so that we can have that experience. Yeah, that concert was really good in London. You so oh, endure. Oh man, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and I know exactly what you mean because I did feel that. I was, I just felt so inspired. You know, you know what we're saying. Like when you go see good art, like the right. band you saw last night. Yeah. The Crazy Horse. I mean, that to me is like, that's yeah. like what it's all about. You know. Yeah, well, something you said it really resonates with me, and I think that that speaks to what connects uh, people to really good art is that you sought to not do things the way that anybody else was doing them mm. there's a um an individuality to it mm-hmm. and i think that's all what we're seeking for ourselves mm. that's like a universal like pursuit is mm. that to be fully expressed in who we are uniquely and mm. so when someone's up there doing that mm-hmm. and uh constantly and relentlessly refining um what it means to be themselves through the medium of their art people mm. really connect to that because it's like that's like a, such a huge, mm. deep human desire to mm. be uniquely and uh, individually ourselves. Totally. Yeah. yeah, I totally feel that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, this will probably be the first of many Simmer, uh episodes on the podcast. Um, before we sign off for this one, though, what what's going on with your next tour? Yeah, so we're going to be touring at the end of March 2019, eastern side of North America, so all the way from the south of Miami up to Montreal in Mm -hmm. Canada, a couple more places in Canada, and all throughout in between. So we're really looking forward to that. Then what's after that? Uh, And then we're making a new album. We're actually, right after the tour, we go right into the studio, so... 
So people that are going to be on tour on the eastern side of North America are going to be expect some of the newer songs that we're going to be putting on the album because we're uh, we're going to be wanting to be ready to record those. And yeah. then touring, you'll be Europe. Um, yeah, then all of September, end of August, all of September in Europe, and then back on the west, the western North American side. Um, October, October, like last two weeks of October, or last three weeks of October, first week of November. Instagram handle is? Simrit Carr. <laughs> S-I-M-R-I-T-K-A-U-R. And uh, SimritCarrMusic.com, S-I-M-R-I-T-K-A-U-R, music.com. Get our tour dates and listen to our music Anywhere you get your music, Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, da 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 da. Exclusive music from Simrit in the Life Force Academy. There's certain tracks that she makes exclusively uh, for that. You can go to lfa.yoga to check all that out. All right, that was fun. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> thanks, guys. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening, everyone. That was our first conversation with Simrit on the podcast. And as I mentioned, I think we'll be doing lots more when she gets new music out and anything cool that's happening that we want to talk to her, we'll bring her on. She's always fun. And I hope you enjoyed it. As always, if you're enjoying this podcast, please subscribe if you haven't already. Wherever you get your podcast, please subscribe. We would love it. It would help us a lot if you would leave us a rating and a review as well in your podcast app. Uh, that would help this podcast get to more ears and hearts. And we'd really appreciate that if you'd subscribe and leave us a rating and a review. That would be awesome. There is a lot more good stuff coming out very soon. Thanks so much for listening. And we'll see you soon at the next Jai Dave show.